Hello everyone. Welcome back to Mixed Kelly Fish Keeper. Hey, today I'm going to be uh, showing you guys how to make a DIY sump. And the one that I'm going to do it for is for this tank that's right over here over my shoulder. Let me show you what I have going on. Alright, what I got here is my uh, one, I think this is a 120. And um, it's an acrylic tank and this was set up to have a, a, a sump set up for it. If you can see in the middle right here, we have that box area where you would have the water that would go in. And then let me show you up here, where do I have? All right, there you can see the, the return. It's got these uh, nozzles in here that I'm gonna set up. I've got it, I've got the water level down low right now because I'm working on the plumbing in the back of this, of this sump. Uh, if I pull, point this down, it'll siphon through it. It'll send water to the back of it. But this is what it's, this is the way it's set up. Let me show you the backs of this box. Hold on. See, this is where the water is going to go in here. And you can see where the pipes uh, would go down there. I have to put uh, two lines for the return lines. And then the two center holes there are what actually goes down to the, to the sump. So let's take a look at it from the backside. All right, here's the backside of what we were looking over at the top. As you can see, these right here are the two, um, I guess would go into the sump and these on the outside would be the return lines. I'm only gonna use one of the drains, which is right here. And what I ended up doing, I set it up with a bypass valve uh, so that I could close it if I need to do something on any maintenance or anything on the sump. And what I'm gonna do with the return lines, and I haven't tried this yet, I'm working on, on getting it to work. Instead of running, because I only have one pump, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna tee it off of here, and this is gonna provide the return back for that. As far as what I'm gonna be using for my containers and the filtration system, let me show you guys that right now. All right, guys. Uh, as you guys have have known for a while, I've been wanting to set up a sump for for that aquarium up there. And originally, I was gonna use a 29 gallon that I had. But that didn't, that ended up going to the Shelleys, and I do have a 55, but it seems like too much of a waste of a fish tank to set it up with a sump, in my opinion. So I was cleaning here in the garage the other day, and I was looking to some of the stuff that I had, and I was thinking, what the what can I use that would work as a sump? So I started also looking at DIY sumps on YouTube, and of course, anybody that's looking for stuff for DIY stuff, you, you can't help but to come across uh, the DIY King, which is Joey. And he had used one of these to set up uh, like a trickle system, uh, filter or uh, he called it a, a wet and dry. So looking around, I noticed that we had this one laying around in here in the garage, just, you know, being empty. And I found this tote where I could sit this in there. So the, the basic idea is that I'm gonna have the water come in through the top. One of these layers is gonna be um, the, the, I guess the, what they consider the dry region where you have all your, your mechanical filtration. And the next level will be what sits in the water and that's why they call it a wet. And uh, what I'm gonna use for that is gonna be lava rock. Um, so that's going to go inside the tote. The tote is basically to keep the water from spilling all over the place. And this, I'm not going to fill it up. It's, I want to say it's like a 40 gallon tote. Um, where am I trying to guess? When it says right here, we're looking at a 35 gallon tote. So these two, I'm going to set them up and this is what's going to be my, my sump. So let me, let me go ahead and start prepping this and I'll show you exactly how I'm gonna do this. So here's the basic idea. Um, obviously this container is a little bit tall for the return. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna be removing the top tier since I'm only gonna need two sections of it. Uh, as you can see, this is gonna be the basin where the water is gonna be held. This is a pump that I was able to pick up at our local swap meet. Uh, I've used it for other projects uh, so this is the first time I'm going to use it for here. My only concern is that I have enough um, head pressure to be able to run the distance that it needs to 
go all the way to the top but since it's less than six feet and what i've seen according online on the specification this is good up to 14 feet of head pressure so i think i'm going to be okay as far as the return but you never know until you actually put it into you know you start testing it out so hopefully this is going to be big enough to run that and uh as you can see what's going to happen is i'm going to take this this will go down into here this will screw into that into that outlet right there i'll send the water up the pipes into the tank and then come back through the return and uh what i'm going to do with this top right here these come come undone they're just in there clipped of course it doesn't want to do it now let me remove the that's one of the containers okay so that's what i'm going to take that top off so now that's going to allow for my return to come in here this is going to be the first stage like i said it's going to be i have some sponges that i'm going to cut out to fit in that drawer and then i'm going to also use some polyfill this will be the the top layer because it's more porous uh, material and then my fine mechanical filtration is going to be the the polyfill that will be beneath that and, and that's just because it'll be easier to clean that sponge in my opinion uh, and and the polyfill i can use it more than just once and then what's going to happen is i'm going to eventually drill a series of holes on this bottom here which is going to rain down into the bottom section where is where i'm going to have all the lava rock and that's going to be the biological filtration so the only thing i need to do now is show you how i drill these things and then put it into action so let's go do that okay what i want to do today now is i'm going to start setting this up to do the trickle filter and one of the things that i need to do is to be able to take this drawer here we're going to move this out of the way for right now put it over here and we're going to take this and in order to be able to get a pass through for the water i need to drill some holes on this section right here uh, so what i'm going to do is basically set up a grid pattern and then drill out some holes in here and um, you know that should be able to start our first our first stage of the trickle system so all i'm going to do is roughly sketch out a grid that i want So now that I've got the the basic um, layout of the, of the grid that I'm going to use, I just need to get a drill with a bit. So let me go do that. So now what I want to do is just drill a series of holes on this so that we have um, an area for the water to be able to pass through. All right, this is what it's gonna look like once you've, I've already drilled all the holes in it. I don't know if you can appreciate that. If it looks a little, a little uh, opaque, one is because of the plastic is that color, but also because I sand off the rough edges that were done by the, by the drill bit. So this is the idea. You can just make a series of holes on the bottom. The idea is that you're gonna have your filter material on here. Water's gonna fall into this chamber and then it's going to rain down into the next chamber down here so the next thing i need to do is set this one up for for that uh sub filter okay so this is where this drawer is going to go so this is looking at it the way it's going to be facing water's going to fall there it's going to go into this chamber now what i'm going to do and i got this from a different video that i was watching i thought it was a pretty good idea so this is going to be sitting in the tank and the water pump is going to be on this side well, if I make holes that are either at the bottom or on the side, the water is going to come out through this area and could potentially leave a stagnant area on this side of just standing water that doesn't move in any direction. So what I want to do 
instead of drilling holes on the bottom of this one, I'm gonna drill them here on the side, on this side, so that the water, the only way it can go out is this way. As the water exits the, the, bottom, the bottom tray, it's gonna come out in this direction, it's gonna have to flow in this direction to where the pump's gonna be at on this side. And that will help me to prevent any dead zones inside of that sump. At least that's what it's gonna be in theory. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll see how it works out. Okay, so as you can see, I've already drilled the holes on this side. I'm not gonna drill too many because I don't know how many I'm gonna need. And as you can see, the rest of it is intact. It's only on this side. I don't know how the flow is gonna be through here. I'd rather have uh, less holes than what I need than more because I can always drill more, but I can't plug uh, more holes. So. I'm going to start off with that. I'm going to give it a, a, a dry run. I mean, I'm going to a trial run and I'm going to see how that's going to work. I can always regulate the water coming into the sump with that valve that I have on there. Um, but that's just an idea. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fi my filter media, which I'm going to use a coarse pad. Uh, as you guys can see, you can see some daylight through it. This is kind of like uh, I've seen it used on pond filter. All right, let me show you what it is, how I'm gonna set up my filtration media. As you can see, I've already got the very first layer, which is gonna be this polyfill. Um, here's my reasoning behind this. Typically, the way you want a filter set up is you want your courses material to be the very first uh, material that comes into contact with the water coming in from the aquarium. Reason being is if it has the, the, the largest partic uh, particulate matter, they're gonna get stuck on the on the on the coarse filtration, which in this case is gonna be this green pad. After that, you want to reduce the porosity. And what I'm gonna go with is this uh, sponge filter. I don't know how many um, pores per inch this is. It's just one of those defaults that I picked up at a local fish store uh, up in Phoenix. Uh, and so I'm gonna use that as my secondary filtration system and the final and polishing. Um, filtration system is going to be the polyfill and I want to put that at the very bottom because I want the majority of the debris to be captured by that pad and this pad and this will be able to stay cleaner and longer for for a longer period of time at least that's the idea in principle so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put this sponge in here and uh, I had to do a little cutout because it wasn't big enough So that's gonna be the second layer of filtration. And then this is gonna be the very top, the very first part of it. So like I said, in theory, this is gonna capture the larger debris. Uh, all of these, with the exception of the probably the sponge uh, was probably what cost me the most. And I think it was like $22 for that sponge. Um, this stuff you can get fairly cheap. It's a uh, I see it used a lot in air, air filters for uh, AC units, um, and uh, it's just you know it, it shouldn't be a problem with this stuff. So this one I can rinse out if I need to, or I can just throw it away and get a new a new a new pad that I can add in here. Like I said, it's relatively inexpensive. And then at the very bottom, I don't know if you can see that there, I have the polyfill. So that's the basic mechanical filtration that I'm gonna put in here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and um, get wash out the, the lava rock that I'm gonna use for the biological. And then we can add some water and see how this is gonna work. So hang on, I'll show you the next step. Okay, so I've got it up and running now. I don't know if you can see the water spout that the return, that water movement that's coming out through there and then this one. Uh, now it's just a matter of me trying to dial it in. Let me show you in the back what I did. Okay, here you go. So the water's coming down through this main drain right here. And I can regulate the flow of this through here. And I'm still trying to dial it in. Um, there's where the pump's at. So the water goes through the filter media. It's going to come out to the side. I don't know if we can see the water actually coming out. Probably not. But it's going to come out on this side, which is going to cause that water movement to go from here to here and then flow around it 
to where the pub sat. And the reasoning behind that is to try to avoid any dead spots in that area. Uh, I still have to dial in the, the amount of water that's in here. Um, like I said, this is all just a learning experience, but it comes from the return from the pump. It splits off into these two, into these two lines right here. And that's what you see the elbows up at the top. So that is the basic uh, principle behind this trickle filter. Uh, it's very easy, uh, pretty inexpensive to do. And um, you know, you can almost get it done with parts you have laying around in your, in your, in your home without really having to spend a whole lot of money. Most of us could probably find a tote, an old plastic drawer cabinet that's no longer being used and maybe buying some minimal amounts of PVC pipes and some uh, fittings. And you could actually set up a uh, sump uh, on one of your aquariums. So let me show you again from the front what it looks like. All right, here's the front view. Like I said, you can really see the water movement on this side. Uh, there's sub coming out of here, but not as much as, as I have down there. Uh, especially now that the temperatures are so high in my fish room, this is going to help agitate some of that water and get some oxygenation inside the, the water column so that these guys can, can continue to, this, to thrive in this aquarium. Um, but that's it. It's a simple DIY with very few parts, and you can go ahead and set up a, a sun filter. So, till next time. Thank you guys for being here with me. You guys have a good day.